Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Dr. Emily Rubinson. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, Dr. Rubinson graduated in 2011 in chemical and physical biology, and then she was here for a postdoc for a year. So welcome back. Thanks for coming. Um, tell me a little bit about what you did while you were here at Vanderbilt. So while I was here, I was in the lab of Dr. Brant Eichmann, and we studied DNA glycosylases. I um, did basically a structure function analysis of a specific DNA glycosylase, ALK-D, which responds to DNA repair. It removes the pair. It removes the repair. Um, and what was unique about the, the glycosylase was that it had a, a novel structure for different from other glycosylases. Um, so it was really interesting to study. Okay, so what have you done since then? So since then, I have been working at Avon Products, Inc. for the past three and a half years. Um, so I did a short postdoc in Brandt's lab, um, and then I got the job at Avon in the fall of 2012. Okay. Um, and I've been there ever since. So how did you get that job? That sounds great. So I've always wanted to be in the cosmetics industry, okay. um, in the beauty industry. I've had a, kind of a passion for beauty my whole life. So I um, spent quite a while searching for jobs, applying to jobs, networking. Um, took me about 18 months okay. to finally to finally get the job. Um, yeah, okay, so tell me what you do now. Like, what are some of the things that you do every day? So I'm currently a program manager at Avon. Um, I work in the upstream group, it's called New Technology, specifically in the physical science group. And we're responsible for evaluating new materials to include in both our color and our skincare cosmetics. So as a program manager, I do a number of different things, um, but mostly I lead project teams. So we're responsible from progressing an idea or a concept through different phases. Um, so we start kind of an exploratory phase, trying to understand, you know, is the concept viable? Is this technically feasible? And as we progress, you know, we build in other pieces that are involved in bringing a product to market. Okay, so what's a typical day look like for you? So a typical day, so um, I'll tell you basically like what I did yesterday. Okay, good. So um, the first thing I did, I had an update with my boss, with my manager. So I spent about an hour kind of going through, you know, what I've been doing the past couple of weeks, kind of checking in with him, okay. um, you know, helping him or having him help me kind of troubleshoot some some issues. Um, then I spent a couple hours looking at new materials and trying to understand, you know, whether or not these are things that we want to evaluate for different projects. Okay. Um, so kind of going through the the literature, trying to understand, you know, what's new and unique and different about this material and what could it bring to okay. to our products. Um, spent a couple hours doing that, trying to um, figure out, you know, what sort of experiments I would do if I, if I brought them in. Um, then I spent a little bit of my time preparing slides for a presentation that I'm giving next week to management. So trying to coordinate with some of my coworkers to get the slides ready and make sure that we're all aligned and that the presentation says what we wanted to say. Okay. Um, then in the afternoon, I had a team meeting. So I led the team meeting. That's when, you know, everyone from the team comes and we talk about, you know, kind of what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks, trying to progress the, the project. Um, and then I spent the last couple hours doing new method development with um, a couple of my coworkers. So we're trying to nail down the protocol for a new method to evaluate um, some mascaras, actually. Okay. Cool, that's like the, my favorite full day. I love that you went all the way through it. Um, okay, so tell me about what kind of skills that you have personally that make you a really good fit for what you're doing. So one of the things I think that um, really benefits me at Avon is that I can do both the technical and the consumer. So in Upstream, um, over the past couple of years, we started to do really um, consumer-driven ideation as opposed to just like pushing technology and trying to build products just from technology alone. Um, so now we're really trying to integrate the technology with the consumer and being a consumer myself and kind of having, you know, that's really my hobby is makeup and cosmetics. So having that passion and understanding of 
the products and, like I said, being a consumer myself, really I can bring kind of a unique perspective to the technical work. Cool. Um, so, I mean, a lot of things that, that we do, you know, involve both, you know, analytical thinking and creative thinking. So I feel like I can bring both of those to the role. Great. <clears throat> so you're in the... So you were in an academic setting for a long time, and now you're in sort of an industry consumer setting. What is what are the differences? What are some of the things that really stood out to you that were very different? So there are a lot of things that are the same and a lot of things that are different. Okay. So um, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, industry is just as kind of money conscious as the academic world. So we're always trying to do things, you know, efficiently and kind of get the most out of the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a surprise to me. I kind of thought, oh, you know, I work in the industry now, like the floodgates will open, like we can buy whatever we want, we can have all the resources we need. And yeah. um, some of that is true, but you know, it's, it's not quite as, um, you know, free as I was kind of expecting it to be. Um, one of the differences is probably the timeline. So we're, even in upstream, you know, we're maybe four to six years away from seeing a product launch, but that's accelerated kind of as you go through the process. So in our downstream groups, for example, they might get something to, to, to market, you know, within six months to a year. So timing is very different. Um, science moves really slowly. And so trying to do science on kind of a market timeline can be um, tricky at times. Okay. So um, also there's a question of is industry versus academia, you know, work-life balance. Is, do, have you noticed any differences with how many hours, you know, you had put forward during your training versus what you do now as, you know, in the, the industry area? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, especially at Avon, I have a really good work-life balance. Um, Avon kind of prides itself on supporting um, not just women, but, you know, women and men employees to make sure that they have that balance. Um, you know, it's it's different for everyone, kind of is, is different for the job, but I find that, you know, when the day is over, I can go home, I can put it all away, and, you know, I can come back to it in the morning. It's always gonna be there in the morning. Um, Personally, like I'm always kind of thinking about it just because I love what I do and it's exciting to me. Um, but it's not quite the same pressure that I had during graduate school where it was like constantly on and it was always kind of hanging over your head. Mm -hmm. um, and you thought, you know, if you could just, if you could just finish it today, you could just do, you know, that many more experiments tomorrow. Um, so it's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more flexible in industry. Okay, great. So a lot of graduate students and postdocs want to be in a position just like yours, what are some of the ways that they could really prepare themselves for, you know, either getting ready for the job market or how can they be a good candidate for that role? So one of the most important things I think really is communicating, communicating well, communicating clearly. Um, I've noticed sometimes, you know, when you, when you get so kind of in the weeds in school and it becomes a lot about how you did what you did, Whereas I would say in industry, what, what I'm looking for in a candidate is really trying to, to know if you understand what you did and the impact of what you did. And so being able to kind of articulate that clearly and communicate that to people that probably have no understanding of what you did um, is really useful because I'm constantly communicating, constantly communicating with people that don't have the same scientific background that I have, trying to explain to them, you know, what the science is and why it's important. Um, as well as, you know, spe specifically for, for my department, we really kind of value like innovative, creative thinkers mm -hmm. because you know, the cosmetics industry has been around for years. I mean, Avon itself has been around for 135 years. So, you know, it's like, what really is new and different um, in when it comes to the actual products? You know, there's, there's not a lot and innovation takes a while. So trying to understand um, or trying to, to identify unique solutions, unique technical solutions to these consumer problems is um, really kind of, makes you successful. 
So I'm sure you've had to do some networking in your past. What are your, um, what's sort of your strategies, your, your way that you do networking? So yes, I did a lot of networking when I was applying for a job. I continue to network today. Okay. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I got was to listen more than you talk. Um, so ask a lot of questions. People love talking about themselves. So it's not that hard to get people to talk about themselves. Um, and you know, networking is not fun or easy. <laughs> so the more questions you can ask, yeah. the more it becomes more of like a conversation. Sure. Um, and it gets easier to kind of make those connections. And I would say to, you know, don't feel like in a group setting, don't feel like you have to talk to someone to, to, to one person all night. You know, sometimes people are talkers. Um, mm -hmm. It's okay to say, you know, really nice to meet you, you know, and move on. Okay, good. So you said it took you 18 months to land the job that you really wanted and you really were going after it. Tell me about those 18 months. Like, what were you doing? What were some of the things that, you know, really, you know, did you apply online? Did you talk to people? What did that look, what did your job search look like? So I did anything and everything to get the job. So I sent out, you know, dozens and dozens of applications just through, you know, corporate websites, you know, going to corporate HR websites and submitting your application. Um, I, one of the things that I did was I let basically everyone know what I wanted to do so that, you know, hopefully it would kind of spark something in them. Um, so I made connections through Vanderbilt and outside Vanderbilt with kind of anyone and everyone start, you know, sending emails, cold calling people. I mean, I was doing kind of everything. Um, I was, you know, I knew the industry I wanted to be in, but I didn't know the industry. It's not, the, the industry, the cosmetics industry is really located in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and some out West. So being in Nashville, you're a little bit kind of far away from things. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, you know, just tried to learn about the industry as much as I could. Um, I joined professional organizations. So I joined the Society for Cosmetic Chemists. I joined Cosmetic Executive Women. Um, I actually did, they have a mentoring, like an online virtual mentoring program um, that I did. I was able to talk to some people who were in the industry. Um, none of that actually helped me get the job. Like I got yeah. the job very traditional. Like I submitted <laughs> my resume online and finally someone called me like nine months later. Um, but having those conversations with people really helps me understand, you know, what the job applications were, you know, what the, yeah. what the kind of, every industry has their own language. And, you know, when you're applying, sometimes you just have no idea that what's the difference between a chemist and a research scientist. Right. Um, and sometimes it's hard to tell from, from the job posting. So talking to those people really helped me understand what the job actually was and helped me kind of narrow my search. Great. Okay, wonderful. Um, if you had one like big piece of uh, nugget of like wisdom that you would want to share with graduate students and postdocs, what would it be? That you know they're in this in the trenches now. They're looking to search for a job soon. What would you What would you recommend? Um, I would say know that it ends. <laughs> okay, at some point you get a job. Okay. Um, so I mean that's something that you know. It's, you're kind of slogging away at it and looking for a job is kind of a full-time job. So knowing that at some point it will end, you will get the job, you know, you will get the interviews is hopefully inspiring. <laughs> yes, I think it is. That's good. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciated having you. Thanks for having me. Sure.